This right here gonna be a cakewalk. Every single time I do a video like this where I talk about the tier list and I talk about how people are upset, I just am constantly reminded why I no longer do tier lists myself. When a Tekken fan sees a tier list, they're like, how dare you put my character here? Oh my God, Arsenal and Ash, you are the biggest scrub I ever seen. Like this is the takes people have when they see not only Arsenal's, every tier list, every tier list faces so much scrutiny and I, I think at a certain point, bro, it's like, it's too much. But the second wrong, Steve Fox and Jen. Tekken is such a fascinating game because you can have two characters who have the most potential, yet people don't know how to like fully tap into that. So they get bodied day and night. And there's a big discussion going on right now about, you know, Kazuya having the easier electrics in a devil form. Uh, Kazuya has a very bad win rate as well. He's B tier on this tier list. When you look at the statistics and you look at how much these characters lose, it makes sense why the developers are making the decisions that they're making. I understand it, but also I always talk about the line in the sand and it's definitely there. And with Tekken 8, the more I see, the more they are, you know, coming across that line. But let's go back to Steve and Jen, some of the most powerful characters in the game, but no one knows how to use them. What do you do there? Now Jen Kazama's doing backflips. We haven't seen what Steve is gonna do yet, but I'm pretty sure he's gonna be doing something a little bit different as well. To show exactly how long I've been talking about Claudio being OP, I went to the comment section and I simply searched Claudio. And the oldest comment from me talking trash about Claudio where someone responded to was two years ago. Two years ago, I've been saying that Claudio is a monster. Now, all of a sudden, since Arsenal got 6 0 everyone's paying attention to it. This is what I mean when I say that the Tekken community takes way too long to assess a certain character's power. Katarina being A tier. This is what I mean when I say buffing has ruined characters. Joka, someone who just won the mix up at the time of recording, a fantastic player, uh, he says Nina and Master Raven C tier. No way. I don't know how high you would really place her, but Master Raven is a monster. You can feel the difference. It's like the same with Katarina where this character was weak, was C tier, but there's no way, at least like B plus or something. Cat Master Raven's a monster. She's just a monster, you know? Magnificent says, I'm not even gonna address this because I'll get mad, but drag is so trash. That's all, that's all I wanna say. There aren't 10 characters worse than drag in the game. Stop playing drag and it goes on, right? I feel like dragging off is good, but maybe it's because the players who pick Dragon off are good themselves. And also on the topic of characters being considered far stronger than they are, I gotta talk about Lucky Chloe. I gotta talk about Lucky Chloe. I get she is a trash character with frames and all this other stuff. But the thing about Lucky Chloe is you yourself have to be perfect. If you make one mistake, that's all she needs to delete your health bar. And I feel like that should be considered when you're talking about how powerful a character is. The way we got here is because everyone wants more power. Everyone feels if they could just get another buff, they could win more matches and they will never take any kind of nerves whatsoever without a fight. So that's how we got here. And I wonder, it's gonna continue with Tekken 8, but I wonder how the developers is going to respond to this because a lot of the stuff that happened in Tekken 7, you can't go back from. They can't all of a sudden release a patch and nerf every character from S to B. You just can't do that, right? It would be madness. So too little, too late. Let's see what they do the next time. I swear every pro player tier list is just who they get cooked by or struggle against the most. Actually, nah, let me break down this tier list. S tier, the characters everyone know is S. A plus, the characters you lose to. A equals you definitely use these characters and trying to downplay, or you get cooked by the players who use these characters. Whenever you talk about a character being powerful, like back when I used to talk about Claudio and how strong he was, everyone used to always say like, oh, that's because you can't handle the matchup. They, they hear the criticism and they think it's like me not being able to win or defeat the character. For me personally, when I sort of complain about how powerful a character is it's not because i can't stop like i can't stop kunimitsu it's a very hard character to stop but i can't do it if i'm simply better than them because i said this before and i'll say it again and this is how i end the video people pick powerful characters like kunimitsu dlc paul phoenix they pick powerful characters 
and they just play so careless they play so brain dead because the character is basically doing everything they don't have to think about oh is this punishable or oh what am i risking here you just press buttons and the character does everything and that aspect is like the worst that's that's my take on this that's my take uh, i could go on and on because i really don't talk about balancing that much so in the rare instances where i do i try to not so much focus on individual characters but i more so try to focus on the psychology the, the mindset of players that's all i really want to talk about in this video thank you guys for watching subscribe to the channel check out some of the other videos that i have coming soon see you in the next one and bye bye